Beaver have been on the landscape for over five million years. They're not going anywhere. However, they were nearly hunted to extinction and now they are coming back. And there's a lot of excitement around beaver because they provide all of these ecological benefits. They help mitigate floods. They help attenuate the effects of wildfire. They help recharge the groundwater and clean that water and increase the quantity on the landscape, providing all of this habitat for a bunch of other wildlife species. And so with that excitement, we want to keep them on the landscape as long as we can. However, there are instances where beaver are creating issues, especially when it comes to water conveyance. The Oxnard Tin Ecology Centers are bringing back the beaver campaign. We've really been working with landowners, land managers throughout the state. So we've been working with coastal salmonid people. We've been working in mountain meadows in the Sierras and Southern Cascades with ranchers and riparian rangelands. And today we're out here in the Southern Sacramento Valley, which is really a lot of flat ground and a lot of irrigated ag and flood irrigation, and especially the rice folks, the National Wildlife Refuges, duck clubs, such as where we are today at Roosevelt Ranch, have a complicated set of canals and ditches and ponds and waterways or paddies that they're trying to manage flow on. And so they tend to do that with various pumps and also with concrete structures. They're called weirs different kinds of weirs, but they're basically a vertical structure that allows the water to flow into that structure. And then in some cases it goes through a pipe, under a road, into a paddy. So for instance, right next to us here is one of these weirs. It actually has a wheel on the top that runs a gate, a screw gate, so they can open and close that to regulate the flow. And that inlet into the weir down at the water level is when the water enters, it makes a lot of noise, a lot of splashing sound, the beaver feel the pull of water. And the beaver that live in this lake here, their priority in this life is to keep as much water in their lake as possible. So whenever there's a leak in the system that they perceive as a leak, they're going to bring the various sticks, cattails, tulies, mud, and they're gonna to try to block that up and, and basically reduce that leakage. So all of this material that's floating here had been pressed up, placed by the beaver at the inlet to this concrete weir and would basically plug it up and disallow it from draining. So this device here is really just cool. It's kind of like a, an underwater snorkel in some ways, where we're basically just adding a little snorkel to the front of the weir by sliding that metal housing down into the double track and then attaching this 24 inch pipe to it. And then you'll notice there's holes drilled in the pipe throughout to perforate the pipe. And then also on the end of it, they welded up a rebar cage. So the beavers can't get into the pipe. And what you have then is when they fill the lake back up, where I'm sitting now will we'll be underwater, likely you know a couple feet underwater. And it'll just allow that water to convey through whenever they open up the gate valve and pass through to wherever they wanted to go to fill the habitat unit next door without the beavers being able to hear the flow or sense the flow and then be able to plug it up. And so it's a porous snorkel that just deceives the beavers from be not being able to basically plug up the front of the weir. Pretty low tech. And what's really cool about this one is that this weir has been here for over 10 years already. It's an existing design a double track weir so it's kind of like a custom little kit that you can just get and then in this case retrofit your existing conveyance structures your existing weirs um, in not a very long period of time it took a couple hours and the return on investment for this one initial installation so that you don't have to do the work of cleaning out these weirs removing the material endangering your lower back in the process and having a relationship that maybe was before adversarial with the beaver. Now you aren't so mad at the beaver, you can just let the beaver be and you can do the work you want to do. Uh, my name is James Rathjen. Uh, I've been managing Roosevelt Ranch for over six years. Roosevelt Ranch is a very large preserve. Uh, we're over 3,000 acres uh, with some ag ground as well. This is uh, one of the largest NRCS projects in North America. This project was started in 2010 by a partnership and they had a vision to kind of recreate what the Sacramento Valley habitat looked like at one point. 
and their biggest goal is conservation. We do have quite a few resident beavers. I mean, it kind of goes with the territory around here. We do struggle a lot with uh, the beaver production around our water control structures. Of course, at night, uh, they're working all night long and then we're working all morning long to clean up after them. We have partnered um, with you guys and uh, we have decided to kind of pilot and prototype a beaver structure like this. During our irrigation season, it'll probably save us um, an hour of labor a day. Um, probably just the structure alone. And if, if you count that up, we work a six day week. So there's six hours that we will be saving in a week. And that's pretty much half a day. So if we were able to save a half a day of labor just by spending two hours to install this on one morning, I think, um, I think, you know, that'll help us continue to build better habitat and keep on going with our mission here at Roosevelt. My name is Jacob Byers. I'm the assistant refuge manager for Calusa, Sutter, and Butte Sink refuges. Um, so we are here right now on Sutter National Wildlife Refuge. Um, we mainly manage this refuge for migratory waterfowl um, and water birds, so it's mostly managed wetlands here. Uh, the refuge is about 2,500 acres, uh, of which about 2,000 of it is managed wetlands. Well, the beavers, uh, for the most part, are a challenge for us. Um, they definitely, we definitely spend a lot of time unplugging water control structures. The beavers like to plug them up a lot. Um, and it definitely uses a lot of our man hours and definitely over the history of the refuge um, we've had lots of employees go out on workman's comp claims due to shoulder injuries, back injuries and such because of the stress of pulling out those beaver plugs. Typically, you know, most days somebody has to come out and manage the water and mostly it's checking the water levels and stuff like that, but the other main portion of it that probably is the most time consuming portion of that is unplugging the water control structures that the beavers have plugged up. Um, one structure can take anywhere from five minutes to two hours to unplug by hand depending upon how much the beavers have been working on it. Some of them get so plugged up that we actually have to, you know, have an employee go back and grab a backhoe to unplug it because it would just take too long to unplug it by hand and also just too much risk for bodily injury. Um, typically, at any given time, we have anywhere from five to 20 structures that we're actively watching that the beavers are continually plugging up. Um, so it's not uncommon for it to take one person four to six hours of the working day just running water and that's primarily unplugging the structures. The structures are pretty simple overall. Um, if if you're a decent fabricator, welder, you can make them yourself pretty easily. Um, if not, just about, you could probably go to just about any welding shop and they would have no problem making them for you. So, I mean, they're overall a pretty simple design that is easy for the home hobbyist or whatever to manufacture or, like I said, definitely any welding machine shop could make them. So for the base portion of the installation is first we got to the structure, cleaned out the structure, and then dug out kind of the hole or the basin. And we, our concrete block's approximately two feet tall. So we wanted to dig that down two feet so the concrete block's are at about the same elevation as the bottom of the water control structure. Then you set your concrete block in place. Once concrete block's set in place, then you can slide the insert in the structure. And then we slid the pipe onto the structure and then we had the pin set up that we pinned the pipe onto the insert structure and then we chained the pipe onto the concrete blocks block so the pipe couldn't float away or move. Um, and then the last thing we did was we put the uh, guard on the pipes to keep beavers from coming into the, the pipe. Um, I mean, I would say it's most ideal to all install it when the wetland or whatever you're installing in it is dry so that way, you know, as you see, we were able to use a laser to make sure we got the elevation right. It's just easier working conditions when there's no water there. You know, and then the install for the structures is one to two hours. They definitely are a huge time saver in employee hours and allows them to be a lot more productive and get a lot more stuff done. So at this moment in time, especially in California, with our brand new beaver restoration program that the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is managing, we at the Occidental Arts and Ecology Centers Bring Back the Beaver campaign are here to help. And one of the tools that we're really excited to bring to bear is this beaver back saver. We think it's a critical piece of 
the solution for how to learn to live with the beaver and also support those working landscapes, the rice growers, the duck clubs, the wetland managers in a way to coexist with the beaver while also saving time, saving money, saving energy, and ultimately having a different relationship with beaver that honors the benefits of the beaver while also supporting their working landscapes. 